Okay, continuing with our additive manufacturing course, uh, I am Rauf Teloni. Today we will talk about the how to do a CAD design for additive manufacturing using SOLIDWORKS. As, you, as the idea that is formed already in your mind through this course, it is very important to be able to create CAD designs uh, that will help you um, to visualize your 3D part that you're going to print through your 3D printing technology that you have. So I thought it's a good idea to go through one single part, how to do it from uh, scratch up to the point where you can print it uh, through a certain 3D printing technology. So if we want to talk about 3D printing using SOLIDWORKS software, that's the software that we will talk about in this lecture. Um, I know this course is basically focusing um, on 3D printing and all the properties regarding these technologies and the specifications that need to be known in order to create successful 3D, uh, 3D object. But it's important, as I mentioned, uh, that the trainee or whoever is taking this course to be able to create uh, at least a simple part using CAD design. Most students in the engineering field, they will they already went through a CAD design course that will teach them how to create CAD design from 2D to 3D and vice versa. But anyway, it's, it's good to have a reminder and a kind of uh, quick revision on how to create a part using SOLIDWORKS in specific and being able to turn that part from a software version to a real world version through the 3D printing technologies. So uh, before you start in SOLIDWORKS in specific, you wanna make sure that you have the right set of units. Either you need to have empirical or metric units. So um, you need to make sure if you have preference as myself to go with the metric units, then you wanna make sure that your units are um, as SOLIDWORKS abbreviated as MMGS which uh, represents the millimeter, gram, and second, um, that is millimeters for length and, uh, and width, and g grams for, for the weight, and uh, seconds for time. So uh, to create the part, you can follow the following steps. Firstly, you will open your SOLIDWORKS software and start for a new part but you want to make sure that you se to, to select the part and not to select the assembly or drawing. So we can see here, this is the main frame or main window for SOLIDWORKS. You can see here this white paper icon uh, means you want to open a new SOLIDWORKS document. So when you click on it, you will have a prompt window. It's telling you you want to go with a part, assembly, or a drawing. So you choose part then you go to OK. Next, uh, you want to look into the bottom hand right corner of the SOLIDWORKS main window to see what kind of uh, current units that you have. Um, SOLIDWORKS in general will have it as a default to be in, in the empirical system units abbreviated as IPS. So you can click on that and uh, change it as we will mention um, in the following slides how to go and change your units. So to change your units, you want to navigate through the um, menu bar uh, to the units menu in the options. So first, you'll click on options button in the top toolbar, then you will switch to the document properties tab, as we will show briefly in the coming slide, then you go to units menu, then you check for MMGS, millimeter gram seconds option, then you hit OK to confirm that this is the unit that you wanna go uh, for your design with. So as you can see here, you can go to options, then you will have the prompt of doc document properties. Then you go down and search for units, you click on this, then you go for the unit system window uh, you can choose millimeters, grams, and seconds in here. Uh, then you hit OK. Next, you will save uh, as a template. So you will replace the default template with the new template 
so that every time you open the SOLIDWORKS, it will be already in default with the, with the unit system that you chose, let's say the metric unit system. So how you do that? You go to the save icon, then you save your template file name, save file as part template, then you click save, and this way you will have the unit system that you chose as default for your for your program or on your on your machine. So fifth, you'll assume that the part um, we want to design is a hex nut. So we will we are trying through these slides to design one single part which is the hex nut so in this case in your mind or on the sketch you have a hex nut with certain dimensions uh, that you have it in front of you or on the computer then you want to create that as a 3d part that will be eventually 3d printed through 3d printing technologies so you go to new part new part then okay and you already uh, set your default units for millimeters grams and seconds as default units then all units by this point will be in millimeters grams and seconds so then you will have the main greeting window and you will have the main drafting interface of solidworks to start your design so if you look on the main window on the left hand side you will see the feature manager design tree it looks like something it it look like this um, it's called feature manager design tree then you go on the top plane you right click you will have these options showing up in front of you then when you have these you will click on normal tool this icon means normal tool so that means you need the main screen view to be normal to the top plane so the top plane will be shown in in 2d in front of you in this case you are drawing inside uh, the top plane like you are looking on the part from the top side view then uh, while the top plane is selected you can switch to the sketch tab at the top of the interface then you select the sketch tool so you can find a sketch tab in here you click on it you will see the sketch tools in here like the line tool circle tool the curves tool and oval designs and text all kinds of um, all kinds of sketching tools that you can find in SOLIDWORKS so now you are creating a sketch on the top plane anything that you will sketch will appear on the top plane just keep that in mind while designing staying in step number seven so we want to sketch the basic hexagonal outline of the nut so you click on the uh, polygon icon in here it will show you this prompt so list of parameters should appear on the left hand panel in here then you set the number of sides for your hex let's make it six in this case so hex equals six you go here give it six then other parameters like the angle and center position and need to be set as well based on the dimensions that you have in mind uh, but for now we will keep them as they are then the next the third step in 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 step number seven the third move that you want to do you want to hover your mouse over the origin which is the base of the two red arrows until the cursor snap onto the dot in the middle so you, then you do left click once to start the sketch next step you lift uh, you do the left click again um, um, so that you will start to write you just cl keep clicking and drag uh, to draw the first sketch for for your uh, for your polygon or the hex so you press enter to finalize to finalize your sketch in that case so then you will select the circle tool uh, in the sketch tab then sketch a circle starting at the origin of the polygon then similar to how we sketch the hexagon then again uh, you don't need to care much about the exact size of the circle but you want to make sure it is centered at the origin and smaller than the hexagon for sure then you press enter to confirm the circle sketch so this is the top plane in the middle of the screen for the solid work software so you click here then you 
while click while holding the left um, mouse click you drag to a certain point then you pick circle from the top of the sketch tab and you increase the circle until you touch the arms of the hexagon in this case so now you need to make the dimensions for our hexagon so you need to make sure that you're still in the sketch mode uh, by looking at the top corner and seeing that the sketch button is depressed and now reads exit sketch you press the s key on the keyboard and uh, the small window click the smart dimensions tool so press the s key then you go to smart dimensions tool uh, now we can see center to edge dimensions of the hexagon left click on the center then left click on the top side and be sure you select the side edge and not one of the points between the two edges then the dimension measurement should pop up left click again anywhere on the screen then you will see a small window you put the value of your dimension as 10 millimeter into the field and you hit enter hexagon now is assigned with a dimension of 10 millimeter center to edge then you double click the dimension label to change the assigned dimension at any time so you can see here uh, doing that as we mentioned will give you the option to input your dimension then you put 10 millimeters hit enter or click on the uh, on the tick in here and you will be good to go in terms of dimensions so the sketch have dimensions now and finalized we can bring the shape into a 3d dimension after this step you will select the sketch by clicking on the sketch one in the left panel then the sketch should turn like a kind of light blue so that you will know it is selected then you will switch to the feature tab at the top and click on extruded boss or base tool we are trying to give this top view 2D dimensional sketch a depth, like you're giving it thickness. You are making it a solid part in this case by, by extruding this 2D sketch into 3D. Like if you look into a cylinder from the top, from the exact top, it looks like a circle, but looking on the side, it have a depth. It's a circle repeating itself until it reached a certain length needed. Uh, that is called extrusion. So immediately you should see the shape uh, get having some depth then using the parameter on the left panel you need to give the knot a depth of 7.5 millimeters in in our example you hit enter to confirm the extrusion then the shape now appear as the following so in the 2d sketch we are having the top view of the hex knot as a sketch then when we went to the features then we chose extruded to 7.5 millimeters now we have we see that it's having a thickness or a depth of 7.5 millimeters so now we're having a solid 3d model or a solid 3d part that can be 3d printed now we need to prepare for a stl file so that the 3d printer will be able to read it and and um, and apply it and print it out so after the part is drafted in SOLIDWORKS, you should save it as STL file. But uh, uh, before doing that advanced, STL file need to be modified as needed. Now to save, you need to go SOLIDWORKS part file. Um, to save that SOLIDWORKS part file you need as an STL, then you go file and save as, then you choose the STL from the list of file types as we will see. Now for the .stl file options and resolutions, um, uh, STL files convert SOLIDWORKS parts into triangles to reform the surface uh, geometry of that part, which means reforming the geometry. So it depends on the number of meshes and the resolution of that mesh and the accuracy of your 3D printer, then it will determine the smoothness of your final 3D printed model. When you want to output the model from SOLIDWORKS, you need to pick Options button, then you decide the resolution of the model and how, uh, many, mesh how many meshes you have and how, um, uh, what kind of resolution that you need for your model. So, when you go in File Format, 
then you can find options you can find here output as binary or asc double i units in millimeters resolution either coarse fine or custom and you can choose you can go in details with this deviation tolerance angle uh, show STL info before saving output coordinate system etc then you hit ok and you hit save so you output as um, as default you should pick binary as the output type this will generate smaller file size with the ASC double I the file will be larger because you will be able to read the STL file code but in, in our case we don't need to read this the STL file code in, in most cases, so your 3D printing software recognizes the binary file. You just care to make this design as a real world 3D object. To have a coarse resolution, for the resolution you can control the facet number with the slider bars. If you pick the default setting and choose coarse as shown in the example previously, then you'll produce less triangles, uh, giving you smaller size. Uh, in for the file uh, because you're using larger triangles to represent the geometry and shorter build time as there is less geometry to print but the model will have more rough surface finish so you can see here uh, this is the sketch for the course resolution this is the how the 3d design of the part after meshing uh, that's considered a coarse uh, surface when you touch it in your hands after you print it you can feel that it is a coarse surface. For the final resolutions, you can see here we are having more meshes and when you convert it to um, a 3D model from the sketch side to the 3D model, then it is relatively smoother surface. With fine resolution, you can create smoother printable file and it will give you more triangles. And this will give you, of course, larger file size because you're having more triangles to represent the geometry and you will have a larger and longer build time because there's more geometry to print but the model will have a smoother surface finish so it depends on your application again you can see here this is a, a, a graphical user interface uh, for SolidWorks choosing a very fine resolution means that the file will be very large it is difficult to handle and it will take longer time to process and uh, in this case uh, if you can see in number three um, it is the optimal resolution the settings made in SOLIDWORKS match that for the printer and the best possible 3D printed model and more efficiency in terms of file size handling and processing if you have a printer a 3D printer at your desk and your design is ready to be printed then you click on the 3D printing icon on the top left corner of the SOLIDWORKS window we can see here the 3D printing icon up here and you can just click on it and you are able to print you can see this is the icon more clear in here 3D printing when you want to print for paper if you want to print your design on paper then you click on this uh, the one with the three on, on the white paper, like a printer icon with number three on it. This is for 3D, number three and D. So this is for 3D printing. New window by after doing that will pop up telling you uh, if you want to choose the printing method and the space and orientation of the part uh, on the printing bed. So as you can see here after choosing the 3d printing technology that you're going to use if it is already in solidworks you can check back with our previous lectures and see if the technology that you want to follow is included in solidworks then you can the software will give you the option of having the bed size for that printer and the space of printing that this printer can handle if your part is crossing these borders then this is an alarm and of course that portion of the part will not be printed or it will give you some problems so it's a very handy tool from SOLIDWORKS to follow before you do your final 3D printing and waiting for hours and realizing your part is not as needed so on the next tab to the right you can choose the printing layer height and the printing material layer height you just put it in here FDM material that you want to go through ABS um, or any any kind of material that is available for FDM 
if you want to decide better what material to go through with FDM, then go to the FDM materials lecture and see which is the optimum material that you should follow based on your application. Then you choose part thickness and material support. Uh, I mean, then uh, in terms of part thickness and material support, then they need to be analyzed. Uh, so that you can know if these if the part is going to fail during building or during printing so you can see here the analysis is starting it's telling you if this part is able to handle all kinds of loadings uh, during the printing so you want to see part thickness and material supports are able um, to successfully finish the 3d printing with with without any kind of complications and at the end, you need to send the printing order to the selected printer and you wait for the part to be finalized. Now we will talk, what if you have a faulty STL file, how, how you're gonna uh, handle it while printing? We know that sometimes during saving, there's a kind of internal problems during generating the code or conversion between the solid, uh, part 3d extension file and the stl extension you will have some kinds of faults so faulty or poorly export stl files will lead to unexpected results these results can be either missing faces poor resolution or geometry inaccuracies then the 3d printing service provider uh, will um, a lot of times decline an order with faulty stl files or it will he will increase uh, its price um, because you need to include manual labor and manual manipulation for the part uh, to repair it after the print is finished. Common STL errors, intersecting faces. Um, most likely intersecting faces detected when two surfaces collide with each other. So the error is commonly encountered when you have multiple bodies occupying the same space. So you can see here these, in, these faces are intersecting with each others and they are not meant to be intersecting in the design so that is considered an uh, STL it will cause STL errors intersecting faces usually lead to failure during slicing if you have an uh, outsourced uh, slicing software the software cannot recognize which areas are inside the model and which areas are outside um, you can repair the, the such of errors in a straightforward way uh, most dedicated 3D printing file preparation software can repair these errors, but success is not always uh, guaranteed for you. So you need it's a it's good to um, combine all bodies into a single solid body in the main CAD software that you use to design your parts or assemblies before you export them into the STL. For the shared edges, non-manifold edges are detected when more than two surfaces connected to, to the same edge. Uh, there's two instances for this kind of errors. Extra surface may be defined in the interior of the model, essentially by splitting it into two. Uh, this error, uh, in a few cases, lead to um, problems in slicing, but it should be avoided. Um, even though it's not sometimes it will pass the slicing uh, step uh, should, you should avoid it as the intention of the designer uh, is not clear so you know there's no point of having some kind of shared edges while you don't mean to have it but you have it so when an edge is shared by more than one body uh, it is not certain if the designer wants them to be connected into a single piece or printed as um, two objects just for the case of avoiding the uncertainty then you need to add some thickness to the thin sections of your 3d model and increase the clearance between the features um, that you don't need them to be connected so you can have let's say 0.3 millimeter clearance um, as a sufficient value um, you can refer to the design guidelines of the 3d printing process that you're using so that you'll have more details of the recommended minimum wall thickness or come back to our previous lectures where we have more details on the recommended thicknesses um, for various 3d printing technologies over refined mesh so if the mesh is too 
too complex or the resolution is too high, it's considered an over over refined. If the total number of the triangles of the STL mesh larger than required, then it will not give you any errors during 3D printing, but it will um, increase the size of the STL file and the build time, making it more difficult to handle. So the tiny details are presented by an overdefined mesh cannot be 3D printed because they exceed the capability of most systems uh, for accuracy and minimum feature size. To repair your STL errors, you can do that using a dedicated 3D printing software, many software solutions, uh, giving you preparation for the STL files for 3D printing, and they can repair most STL errors. Uh, the STL errors can be repaired with the CAD software that you use to design your part before you export it to STL. So the best results will be achieved if the STL file is correctly designed and exported, uh, and uh, it is always considered a recommended option to go with that route. Now, if you want to do 3D printing for grips and fixtures, um, manufacturing companies are trying to improve the productivity and lowering the cost. Uh, lean manufacturing techniques like the implementation of grips, jigs, and fixtures uh, in the production line in specific can help and achieve these goals. So. The high level of customization and complexity that the manufacturing allows uh, for the end design coupled with the speed and accuracy that the part can be made. So it is an ideal solution for producing grips, jigs and fixtures. We can see here an example of grips, jigs and fixtures. So grips and fixtures are workpieces used to help in during the machining, positioning, and assembling of the part in many facets of manufacturing. Uh, they can be made from a range of materials, either steel or aluminum in most cases. Uh, they are CNC machined to a high tolerance to allow a part to accurately locate into the desired position so that you will not interfere uh, with the designed CNC software uh, that is anticipated to create a certain detailed part so that everything will be into into the same scale. Jigs and fixtures can, inc can include attachments that will allow the part to be secured and kept in place. So the customization and accuracy required for grips, jigs and fixtures result in a long production lead time. So the grips, uh, for grips, the part of an automation process that is in contact with the workpiece uh, typically used to transfer or orientate the part these are often custom designed to match the parts geometry. Jigs hold the work piece in place and guide the cutting tool and uh, typically not attached to the machine and can be easily manipulated to align with the cutting tool. Um, accuracy does not depend on operator for sure. For fixtures, they locate, hold and support the work piece securely as the machining or assembling taking place and um, machining fixtures generally secured to the machine so that they will withstand the large machining forces that are uh, applied on the part. So the accuracy of the part still depends on the operator or the guy who's doing the, who's assembling the parts together. The advantages for these grips, jigs and fixtures uh, increase productivity, reduce the waste, and it improves the accuracy and repeatability of the parts. It is uh, giving you a better working safety and low uh, skill is required to use them. In terms of cost, the benefits for 3D printing is the reduction in cost. Uh, more savings come from reduction in high machining costs. Uh, grips or fixtures would be sent away to be machined by a highly skilled operator on a CNC machine uh, for a number of days. For 3D printing, when the design of 3D model is finished, then the file will be sent to the nearest printer as a signal and analyzed and printed on a machine that needs very little human interface which of course save costs in this case. For the speed, uh, that's another benefit for 3D printed grips and fixtures. Uh, they can be produced with speed. Machining of complex metal geometries will take significant planning and highly skilled CAM designers and machine operations. Uh, it will give you a lead time for CNC machining that takes days or weeks before the part is completed. If you use 3D printing to replace the aluminum assembly tools, then well-known car manufacturers um, um, 
they were able to cut the lead time by 92% from 18 days to 1.5 days by using 3D printing only. So these are grips and uh, fixtures using used during the machining. In terms of material, 3D printing offers a very wide range of materials over a range of technologies. Engineering material properties like chemical resistance, flame retardancy, heat resistance, ultraviolet stability, they are available in the 3D printing industry now. Parts can be produced and finished in uh, various colors and surface finishes. Uh, the polymeric materials used in 3D printing, uh, the damaged part, it will give you the impression that the damaged parts are limited during handling as an assembly compared to the more traditional metal fixtures. For the weight, grips and fixtures are um, manipulated by workers. Uh, majority of materials used in 3D printing are lighter than the aluminum, reducing the load on workers, improving safety. Then for the industrial FDM parts, um, they are not printed solid, but filled with infill, further reducing the weight of parts. Designing iterations. 3D printing, as we said, give you speed. It will give you uh, give the designer more freedom to optimize and design through several iterations. Uh, 3D printing technologies give you the complex and ergonomic designs that are easily to be produced, improving worker interaction comfort. For the high accuracy, a lot of 3D printing technologies produce high level of accuracy, as we mentioned before, like the industrial FDM give you plus minus 0.2 of a millimeter. SLA give you plus minus 0.05 of a millimeter. SLS give you plus or minus 0.1 of a millimeter. SLA and SLS can produce fine and intricate details and functional connection like, like snap fits and interlocking features. 